Some teams might not be the best fit in terms of what the Padres might want back. But these are just some teams that stuck out. I did this same thing with Jake Cronenworth a little bit of a little bit ago, so you can go catch that episode if you missed out on that. The first team I'm going to mention, and these are not ranked. These are just looking up the teams in each division and just going through it that way. The Tampa Bay Rays, they don't have Wander Franco at shortstop. They're obviously always looking to contend, and it's only one year. It's not a huge contract. They have Junior Cameron Caminero, though, that I think can play shortstop. He can play, I think, some other positions. So don't know if it's the best fit, but I do know that they don't have Wander Franco. And it seems like the Rays always have pitching, but maybe be careful trading with the Rays. But what I've also said about the Rays is, well, look at the Blake Snell deal. Look at the Tommy Pham, Jake Cronenworth. Like, what, what came out of those deals? Like, Luis Patino, we thought was like the big guy, right? And what, hap- what has happened with him? with the Tampa Bay Rays. Is he on the Rays anymore? I don't even know. Luis Patino, let's see here. He might be on another team. Look it up his baseball reference here. He's with the White Sox now. Okay, so, you know, prospects are prospects until they prove it at the big league level, right? Um, So, you know, maybe the Rays will go with the Padres thing and be like, no, we'll trade for Austin Kim. We're trying to win here. It's not a lot of money. We're trying to contend each and every year. We just traded Tyler Glass now, but you know we can still improve our offense, improve our defense here with this move. So maybe the Rays, the Milwaukee Brewers, Willie Adamas could be dealt. There's Bryce Terang at second base. I think they want to try to keep playing him. Willie Adamas, I don't think he has a ton of years left of control. So if they deal Willie Adamas to another team, then maybe that opens up a spot. Definitely for Ha Sung Kim, and that would only be one year. The Milwaukee Brewers are not a team that locks down guys to these big contracts for the most part. If they do, it's like Christian Yelich when they have to do it, coming off of like MVP seasons. Uh, or they give a contract to a guy that's never played in the big leagues before, who's like their their top prospect, right? In uh, I think Jackson Churio. So I believe he is not a shortstop. So Ha Sung Kim, I'm um, looking maybe. If a move happens, maybe he becomes a fit with the Milwaukee Brewers. The Boston Red Sox, they have Emmanuel Valdez at second base. Kim can play short and second, so I think it kind of opens up some of the suitors. Second base, I I think I listed the Red Sox maybe as a possible team with Crony as well. Crony has a no-trade list, though, and I I don't really know. Trevor Story, I think he's going to be healthy to start the year. He's at shortstop, but I guess he could shift over to second base if they think that's the strongest. But Kim was really good at second base this past year. So if they want an upgrade at second base, maybe a bridge waiting for Marcelo Mayer, maybe Hassan Kim is an option there at one year, seven mil, because that's what you're trading for is one year, $7 million. And let's face it, teams are not getting Hassan Kim at one year, $7 million on the open market, right? So there is a little bit of a sacrifice, right? You, you get Kim for only 7 mil, but you do have to give up something, but you don't have to spend $150 million on Kim right now. You can, you know, postpone that decision a little bit. The Miami Marlins, they have John Birdie at shortstop. Kim obviously can play shortstop. They have Luisa Rice, I think, slotted in at second base. Either there or for, no, I think Josh Bell's at first base. So... I guess that's a possibility. Hassan Kim obviously is an upgrade over John Birdie at shortstop. They do have, I think, a prospect who can play other infield positions as well. Maybe he would play shortstop. So maybe it's not the best fit. Maybe the Marlins are like, no, we don't want to give up pitching when we're playing in the National League East. We're probably not going to go win the World Series this year. Kim, we're not going to go give him a ton of money. Maybe not the best fit there, but in terms of like who needs middle infield right now and who maybe could use them. I mean, the Marlins, Skip Schumacher, they did make the postseason this past year. Skip, I believe he has a little bit of a history with Hassan Kim because, or was he on the coaching staff in 2021? He might have been because that was Kim's, was that Kim's first year? Yeah, that was Kim's first year with the Padres, I believe, because he was playing short during the Musgrove no-hitter. I do remember that. Yeah, because four-year deal, 21, 2, 22, 23, 24. So, yeah, I forget when Skip left. But the Marlins, John Birdie, shortstop, you could do better. 
San Francisco Giants are definitely a fit. They could move Luciano, who is, I think, one of their top prospects. They can move him over to third. And I believe one of the Giants riders was on Ben and Woods recently and pretty much said that Luciano probably profiles better as a third baseman over a shortstop. They missed out on Carlos Carrera, obviously, so they were in the for a long time term shortstop and Brandon Crawford I believe was willing to move or maybe not willing but pretty much had to move over to another to I think third base if Carlos Correa would have signed with the Giants before that whole physical thing happened and Jung Hoo Lee just signed with the San Francisco Giants on a long-term deal Lee and Kim are like best friends Bob Melvin has managed Ha Sung Kim like that seems like a fit you know Tyler Glass now was just traded from the race to the Dodgers and then signed an extension I don't think the Padres want to give Ha Sung Kim to an NL West team, but I could see something taking away the NL West part where it's like, yeah, Padres agree to a trade, and that trade for the other team's sake is contingent on Kim signing an extension for 150, whatever, and the Giants or another team could have their long term shortstop or second baseman, you know, if they want to do it that way. If that's the case, then the Padres could get more back. Like the Rays got more back for Tyler Glass now because Glass now had that extension with the Dodgers, right? So maybe that's something there. But yeah, the Giants, they they need more star power. I'm not saying Hassan Kim's the biggest superstar, but having Lee and Kim on the same team, you would be Korea's team for sure if you're the San Francisco Giants. So I don't I don't know if that's the smartest thing for the Padres to trade Hassan Kim to the Giants. But I'm just saying that's in, ter- in terms of teams needing middle infield, the Giants fit that. The Seattle Mariners, just like Jay Cronenworth, as I listed, you know, the Seattle Mariners, they're not a team that's big on the long term deals either, but you could have an upgrade over Josh Rojas at second base. You have JP Crawford at short, Crawford and Kim as the middle infield combo. The Mariners have that young pitching that they can give to the Padres, and it's one year of Kim. So the Mariners could be like, well, we don't have to give up a ton of the young pitching. Maybe we give up one of them, and then we give up a reliever. Or if the Padres sign someone like Matsui here, then maybe the Padres only want a young starting pitcher, and then they want a prospect on top of that, you know, um, I think the Padres though, one year of Kim, like Kim's a valuable player. So you want to maximize that value that you get back for sure. The Marlins, like I mentioned, like a hypothetical deal, what would be enough? I'm just throwing this out. I don't know if it would be enough, but Trevor Rogers, let's say who is making only a million dollars and AJ puck, who would be a reliever add to the bullpen could be a high leverage guy. Maybe he'd have to earn that spot in there, but he's one of the better, I would say, Marlins relievers. He's making $1.2 million this next season, at least projected to make that, right? Rogers, three years of control, Puck, three years of control, and just toss on Kim, trade to the Miami Marlins, and you get back a starter. You get back an arm, another arm that you can put into your bullpen. AJ Preller has said they want relief help, they want rotation help, and that fits that. And those aren't just one-year guys. Those are controllable arms. Edward Cabrera, Jesus Lazardo. I don't know how realistic those guys are. But I'm just throwing out names that you'd be able to shed some money, create more flexibility. Padres love that word, flexibility, financial flexibility. Now, obviously, the question is, are you going to go spend that on other parts of the roster? But you create more of that flexibility like they did with the Carpenter, Carpenter deal. Not saying Kim is a salary dump. Definitely not. That's not what this is. But I'm just saying, more flexibility, and you can get back pieces that can help you. It's one year of Kim. It's not three, so you're not looking at like the top prospects in a farm system, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, But deals like that, you know, what teams have the starting pitching that the Padres want? I know Tanner Houck has been floated out there. He was, I think, last offseason. Kim to the Red Sox for someone like Tanner Houck. I think you need more than that if you're the Padres. Like, Again, don't trade us on Kim just for anything. But if you can get the right offer and you get pieces that can, you know, fill some other holes, this to me, this isn't like a huge situation where Soto, you created a massive hole in left field. You don't have a left fielder. 
if you trade Ha-Sung Kim, you have a second baseman. Now, you need to go get a first baseman, but you have a second baseman in Jake Cronenworth that you can, you know, put him back into a position that he's more valuable at, you know, where at left field right now with Juan Soto, there's no one that you're placing in left field that, oh, they, they have more value there in left field, you know. Jerkson Profar is a free agent. Like, it's not like he's on the Padres. And don't try to compare Jerkson Profar and Juan Soto together, right? Um, so, yeah, those are some possible teams. If you have some other teams, feel free to let me know those teams in the comments. Ha Sung Kim. Again, there's no rumors of him being dealt, but I'm just, I think, just like some other Padres fans are, saying, okay, who's next? Jake Cronenworth? Okay, it's easier said than done. This is a guy that, will have a bounce back here in my opinion i believe in that strongly he's better at short at second base and shortstop really but he's better at second base than he is at first base value wise you can open up that spot go get someone that's a lefty bat that can give some power there at first base asun kim he's not going to be here long term at least right now financial wise i just don't see that guys that are coming up in the system i just don't see it and let's go get some guys that if you get the right return, again, if you get the right return, go get some guys that will fill some other parts of this roster. And there's some, they're, they're controllable names as well. 